All right, what we've got here is a demo um, of a trigger cam. These are recently being imported to the United States from South Africa. We received a testing and evaluation trigger cam unit. This is a through the scope recorder, retail packaging, the adapters, the couplers for traditional optics, and this is the actual unit itself. The trigger cam has a um, recorder in the top half and then through a mirror it views the uh, area down here which abuts to the rear objective of your day optic. It uh, records in high definition video and the reason that I am testing and evaluating it isn't so much for what it was designed for which is traditional optics but I hope to demonstrate that it has further versatility with uh, PVS-14 style night vision as well as thermal, which is what's on the 243 Winchester back here is a thermal scope. So the challenge I've had with recording with thermal optics, uh, this is a bearing optics hogster scope. It does not have onboard recording. So through a USB-C connection, which is right here, I have to make a connection to an external DVR, which I have zip-tied to the top of my brass catcher. So all the associated wire management is underneath the brass catcher, on the side of the brass catcher. Some of the challenges that uh, external recorders and the associated wires have in the field is we're in and out of vehicles uh, throughout the hunts so I'm, ha I'm having to be careful not to bend or break this junction here uh, and that nothing gets hung up on gear as it's coming in and out of the vehicles uh, that would uh, create a problem for recording also as you're stalking through um, brush or trees uh, things of that nature uh, branches can get hung up in these wires and pull them out of the units as well. So what I'm hoping to do through the use of the trigger cam is to put this on the back of that thermal optic, get rid of all the external recorders and wires and just film the screen directly. Uh, there isn't too many options for through the scope recorders for thermal optics. Uh, you're not actually viewing the live image through a thermal optic. What you're doing is it's uh, a sensor is reading the heat signatures of your subjects and your target and your terrain and it's actually rendering it into an image that is displayed on a near, a, a near eye display screen which is about right here in this unit. So the magnification of this rear, op, uh, rear objective is designed differently than the magnification of these style rear objectives for traditional optics where you're actually viewing the, Im the live uh, image through the scope body. So there's a little bit about the technology differences uh, that can create uh, a challenge in getting a system designed for traditional optics for a thermal optic. Um, we'll also see what it can do with a PVS-14 style uh, night vision um, monocular. So, rather than try to explain the uh, fitment and the setup, I'll put links in the description of this video uh, Trigger Cam does a, a great job of showing you how to tweak and adjust the Trigger Cam system for your day optics. Uh, so I won't spend a whole lot of time in getting into that. Uh, what I am going to attempt to do tonight is find out which of these three scopes. So back here I have a 3x9 Nikon. And what I have found is when I adjust the rear objective diopter in and out, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference on the clarity of the of the duplex reticle. So this is a 3x9 here. Uh, this is a 4x16 Hawk Scope illuminated reticle. 
Uh, I'm thinking this might be an issue. So this is the illuminator turret in the back. And I'm thinking that the trigger cam is not going to be able to go all the way onto the rear objective of this one. So I'll verify that. And then I have a Sig Sauer Whiskey 3 illuminated scope. Illuminator controls are up here with the main turrets for windage and elevation. Uh, this is a 4x12 and the rear diopter adjustment does have a great effect on the reticle clarity. So, between the 3x9 Nikon and the 4x12 Sig Sauer, we'll see uh, which of the two scopes the trigger cam renders the, the biggest image. So, if you look at other trigger cam videos on YouTube, you'll see that the entirety of the reticle and the circular view that your eye is seeing when you actually look through the back of the scope isn't always fully visible with a through the scope recorder. Usually there is a, um, a cropped view and that's just the nature of the, tech, the design here uh, with the mirror system and then there's going to be a sweet spot uh, of where the rear objective and this uh, tube mate uh, and so it is not easy to get the full circular view through the scope so we'll see which of the three day optics gives us the best and then we'll just take what the system gives us with the thermal and with the PVS 14 so I will adjust those here tonight uh, tomorrow when I get out on the range I intend to shoot a 22 caliber um, AR-15, I intend to shoot this 243 Winchester AR-10, uh, and then if everything goes well there, I will try a 458 SOCOM with the trigger cam. Uh, this is rated for high recoil uh, weapons. You just have to sort of watch how uh, far back your scope is on your rail, uh, because with high recoil you generally have those scopes kick back pretty hard towards your eye and this trigger cam is going to add maybe an inch or two behind the scope. So lots to do tomorrow, looking forward to the range trip. Just wanted to give you a brief introduction in terms of what we're doing with trying to uh, see if it has, the trigger cam has any utility towards thermal and night vision optics.